much. And I just want to first confirm that everybody can see my slides. Uh, yes. Okay. I know we're short on time, so I'm going to try and breeze through. Um, Peng, Peng gave a really nice uh, detailed overview of the data quality information work that we're doing. This is going to be a more zoomed out view. This is going to be in part um, public service announcement and also part solicitation for collaboration with respect to our ongoing uh, uh, data stewardship and, and uh, information quality work uh, as we continue moving forward. So uh, thank you again for having us here. This is, this is uh, quite an exciting opportunity to collaborate with all of you over there in uh, Australia and New Zealand. So just a quick overview of our team. Um, unfortunately, Yaxing uh, couldn't join us today, uh, but Yaxing Wei uh, from the Oak Ridge National Laboratory DAC is our chair of the cluster. Uh, the rest of us are the co-chairs. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, yes, I am from Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Uh, the Physical Oceanography DAC is the primary project that I'm working on as, as the data publication team lead. Uh, I've been doing that for about uh, 13 years now, so I, want, I really uh, appreciate uh, the work that Paul's doing with IMOS, uh, with oceanographic data. Uh, oceanographic data is near and dear to my heart uh, with what we support over at PODAC. Uh, we also have with us today on the call, we have Rama, um, representing SSAI, um, and formerly with with uh, ESDIS, uh, continuing to, to support ESDIS through the Goddard Space Flight Center as a contractor. And so Rama is the former chair of the IQC uh, when it formed uh, in 2015. Oh, and by the way, I just want to quickly point out, this is uh, where you can get to our wiki page for the cluster for more information, and as well as uh, past presentations that we've uh, published uh, and, and papers that we published as well. And also, I want to point out that we do have uh, um, mo monthly teleconferences that take place every fourth Tuesday of every month. And uh, so all are welcome to, uh, to uh, join in, um, be part of our mailing list as well. Uh, there's more details on that on our wiki page as well. So our vision is to become internationally recognized as an authoritative and responsive information resource for guiding the implementation of data quality standards and best practices for the science data systems, data sets, and data slash metadata dissemination services. So we're here to really just share um, all the different experiences from all of our cross domain uh, uh, areas of expertise. Uh, uh, some of us are data scientists, some of us are data managers, uh, end users, uh, fundamental researchers. Um, and not all of us uh, come from the US, we have some internationally based people as well. Um, so we, we welcome that level of collaboration, uh, both nationally and internationally. Uh, we do have, I would say, our, our primary uh, presence is, is within the, the NASA and, and NOAA domains. Uh, we have some involvement with USGS, uh, NSF, and some others. Um, we also have, um, I, I mentioned the, the invited speakers at our monthly teleconferences as well, uh, but we also have sessions and presentations uh, where, with which we're, we're organizing sessions actively uh, through the auspices of AGU, uh, the American Meteorological Society, or AMS, ESIP, and our sister organization, the E2SIP, based out of Australia, um, OGC, and, as well as some others. And uh, here's, a, again, a, another reminder of where to get uh, information from our wiki page. We have a variety of publications, which I'll try to go through really quickly here, uh, the first of which uh, was published in 2016 by Pang et al., uh, entitled Scientific Stewardship in the Open Data and Big Data Era, Roles and Responsibilities of Stewards and Other Major Product Stakeholders. And we also have a paper the year later in 2017 published by Rama et al, ensuring and improving information quality for earth science data products. And then we have the paper published by myself with 18 uh, other co-authors, uh, which we'll talk about in a moment, uh, understanding the various perspectives of earth science observational data uncertainty. Uh, going to uh, a quick summary of the Peng et al 2016 paper, uh, I will, I'll start off by saying that um, while this focuses on the roles and responsibilities of data producers and, and scientific data stewards, by no means um, uh, are we um, excluding other stakeholders. So we, we obviously uh, discuss and, and feature in our, in our discussions stakeholders representing end users, applications folks, decision makers, and fundamental researchers, all of which feed information back into the whole life cycle of data quality information. But here, what, we're, what uh, Pe the Peng et al. paper is capturing are the roles and responsibilities are really the primary uh, initial drivers and, and kind of the sustainers and maintainers of data quality information. And so the, 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 front, the front loading and heavy lift initially is from the data producer side in defining and documenting product requirements, uh, as, well, as well as the initial uh, uh, data quality screening and assessments that take place for validation and verification, ensuring data integrity, uh, product char characterization, uh, algorithm um, uh, ass assessments and so forth. And then also on, on the data stewardship side, uh, getting more to where the data is being disseminated, the information is disseminated, assessed, curated, 
um, as well as ensuring that it's usable and that all, all information from the user community feeds back to that uh, continuous loop process. And the, the end goal of, of all of these combined is to ensure that there's transparency, traceability, machine readability, uh, that it's humanly understandable, um, that the products produced for data quality information are descriptive and uh, lending all together to a higher quality product in the end. As Peng mentioned in her talk, uh, there are multiple stages of uh, uh, the, in the data product life cycle. I'm not gonna go into detail here, only to say that uh, Peng has already addressed this quite well in, in her talk, but if you want to learn more about this, you can uh, reference this uh, Rama et al. 2017 DLib magazine paper uh, that goes into more detail. Also to mention that the life cycle aspect of this is, is still being fleshed out and, and, and formalized through the paper that Peng is, is publishing through the data quality information guidelines. Uh, that would be published later this year. Getting to the white paper on the uh, Earth Science Observational Data Uncertainty. Uh, so there were, as I mentioned, 19 contributing authors, uh, including myself, uh, and also representing uh, multiple uh, uh, countries. So we had uh, uh, Ivana Ivanova uh, representing uh, among the audience uh, listening in today, uh, was, was one of our uh, co-authors, and actually Ivana is contributing to uh, some follow-on work as well with us. So we're grateful to have uh, that uh, participation from Australia. We also had some participants from the UK involved as well. Um, and uh, really the primary purpose of this paper that was published in 2019 was focusing on the discovery of the various approaches. I, I make, make sure that I'm careful and say that these, these are not recommendations, but really more just kind of a, a synopsis of, of the variety of approaches taken with respect to um, uh, um, the, the uh, capture, the derivation, and the dissemination and utilization of earth science observational uncertainty information. And so we're looking at this from a variety of perspectives, including the mathematical approach, uh, approaches, which are more the, laying the foundational basis uh, mathematically and statistically um, into how this uh, information is quantified and characterized. And then the programmatic aspects de is dealing more with um, the, um, the policies and the strategic programs that are in place to sustain uh, these things moving forward and to build upon what's already been done. And then the user perspective is dealing with how uh, the, this information is being um, uh, interpre interpreted and utilized, uh, how it's being applied uh, in, in fundamental research. On the observational side, uh, this is really capturing more uh, a variety of use cases with which uncertainty information is extracted from real observations. Uh, primarily, we looked, at this, we looked at this from the lens of satellite-based remote sensing. We did touch a little bit on in situ and a little bit on uh, data assimilation and modeling, but not much. And so because of that, we have some follow-on papers that will be covering that in more detail. Uh, but ultimately, we were able to identify commonality and differences between these perspectives. And there's a number of opportunities that have been identified for the IPC to continue to facilitate and innovate uh, with a number of uh, future opportunities. And I did touch on the fact that numerical modeling was considered but not but excluded um, out of scope for this paper uh, to prioritize our focus on observational data. So going on to some ongoing work with respect to the uncertainty aspects, uh, we have uh, use cases being explored for suborbital in situ uh, modeling and data assimilation. And uh, that will come first, uh, followed by a, a part three paper, which is the harmonization best practices and, and recommendations that includes all of the previous scopes uh, that we've uh, already been able to cover. And uh, Peng has already addressed uh, the ongoing work with respect to the community guidelines for fair data quality information. We have um, past as well as ongoing uh, collaborations um, with respect to E2SIP, uh, the OGC data quality working group, as well as the the Group on Earth Observations, or the GEO uh, Data Working Group, or DWG. And we have uh, collaborations also within ESIP itself uh, with respect to the Data Stewardship Committee that's kind of overseeing uh, the activities of all the different clusters with respect to data stewardship and data management. Uh, we also have very specific clusters such as the, the data, I'm sorry, the, uh, the Disaster Lifecycle and Discovery Cluster. There's additional ones as well with which we collaborate and interact. Um, and so if you go to this URL here, you'll, you'll get a full list of all the different um, uh, collaboration areas within ESIP that um, are opportunities to collaborate and, and uh, get more involved with others uh, within ESIP and seeing what else is going on. There's a lot going on. Uh, what we're also doing right now is we're planning for a summer ESIP session to be taking place. I believe it's going to be in July uh, this year. It will be a virtual conference as well, so we're preparing for that. We're also preparing for a session for the SciDataCon coming up. I believe it's in November of, of this year. And then uh, we're continuing our monthly telecons, as I, as I stated earlier. These are taking place at 6 p.m. UTC. 
every fourth Tuesday. And I have some backup slides as well, but with that, I will conclude. Thank you.